Hello everybody, my name is Theo and on behalf of FP Markets, we thank you very much for watching. In this series, I'll be covering all the latest news with regards to the crypto space. But before we dive right into the news and price action, please like and subscribe to the video as it means a lot to us. Also, of course, feel free to visit our Traders Hub. This is home to a wide array of educational materials such as articles and videos. You can also find some essential traders tools here such as an economic calendar and a forex calculator for managing your risk. All this information is included and provided by Trading Central and is applicable for all our account holders. Now diving into the price action of Bitcoin for this week. Following last week's analysis where we were at the $66,000 mark, we discussed how if we were to see further upside movement, then they would have a potential to reach around the sixty-eight to sixty-nine thousand dollar region. However, if we were to continue our downside, then it wouldn't surprise me to see us hit between sixty-two and sixty-four thousand dollars. That is exactly what's happened in the last week. Of course, there has been some news to be able to support this. However, price action-wise, it's been a simple downtrend here that has been supported at three separate areas here, and we have indeed reached that sixty-two to sixty-four thousand dollar region as we have been discussing. Now, what is the news that has been able to stimulate this kind of move? Well, the news today itself uh, that was released earlier is uh, showing how the Bitcoin blockchain bandwidth itself, the usage has surpassed 90% post halving, which has been driven by a new token standard and increased transaction volume. So it's showing once again, post the halving that the volume has started to increase, transactions have started to increase, and this is now showing through the uh, blockchain bandwidth itself has hitting highs again. So this is one positive, of course, for Bitcoin that the network itself is continuing to expand and the usage is going to get higher as well. Ethereum itself had some news. Um, the Ethereum and altcoin price outlook uh, is looking positive after the SEC drops its investigation whether Ethereum is a security or not. So the SEC have dropped the case because they simply did want, not want to be embarrassed by the outcome because we've discussed in the past, especially with related to the Ripple case, which we'll get into shortly, how the Howey test, which is what determines whether something is a security or not, is completely flawed, completely antiquated, and does not simply match with the times that we're in right now. Just to bear in mind, the Howey test was implemented before phone lines were implemented in, in homes. So not only now have we got into the stage where almost nobody has a landline anymore because we're in such a digital age where everyone has a mobile phone and of course we have digital currency but of course the howie test itself it's still being the main determiner of whether something is a security or not so this is the main complaint that ripple have because obviously they believe that xrp doesn't match as a security ethereum have had the same philosophy and now the sec have come out and have said that indeed um, Ethereum is not a security. All the decision means that at this time, the SEC will not be continuing its investigation. This is not a final determination, which is what Carol Goforth, which is a professor at the uh, University of Arkansas School of Law um, that specializes in business associations and securities regulation has stated. It said the momentous SEC retreat has settled the dust from negative regulatory concerns regarding Ethereum as a security, but the price action now for Ethereum is what's being looked at. Looking at the price for Ethereum itself, it hasn't been as negative as Bitcoin. Of of course, we did mention in the past how it wouldn't surprise me to see the $3,500 region as well as the magic 3,333. That is exactly what did happen. Of course, once Bitcoin had its downtime, the other coins uh, followed suit as well. Ethereum just touched above the 3,333, was around $3,345, so not too far off. But we did see it come touch this region, have a bounce up come down to come up to around $3,600. And now we're sitting consistently at just over three and a half thousand dollars. So we'll see what happens with Ethereum. However, the news itself is very, very positive with regards to Ethereum. If you're taking into account the ETFs that have been announced and have been discussed in the previous videos, as well as of course, this latest news now that the SEC is dropping the case against Ethereum being a security. So very positive news indeed. When it comes to um, the Bitcoin ETFs, Vanex spot uh, spot Bitcoin ETF went live on Australia's biggest stock exchange. And with this, it rose 1% um, on its debut after trading 99,791 shares. So the Bitcoin ETF from Vanek offers Australians a way of being able to invest in Bitcoin through the exposure of the company's US equivalent, which debuted yesterday on Thursday. It's a very, very positive outcome once again, because it's just showing an example once more of services being introduced to other regions, other jurisdictions, other countries around the world. And of course, equally showing that there is demand in these areas for why the service should be included and introduced in the first place. So that's the news when it comes to the uh, Vanek Bitcoin ETF. When it comes to the ETF, 
Um, generally, they've posted $900 million in net outflows this week. So this is, of course, supporting why we're seeing a negative price action. There's been just under a billion dollars that's been in outflows from the ETFs this week. So this is um, something that we've seen as a fifth straight day of net outflows as well. So that was from yesterday. It marked the fifth straight day. So this actually results to being one of the worst performances since mid of April. So this is, of course, what we've discussed in the past when it comes to having good days and bad days. There's also cycles in place as well. As far as it comes to the spot Bitcoin ETFs, we can see that there's been outflows. But at the same time, we can also see that through the blockchain dominance, that there's been an increase in transactions. So there's always two sides to every coin. Standard Chartered, there's an additional service now that's building a spot Bitcoin and Ethereum trading desk. This is a new London-based desk that's going to start operation shortly. It's going to be a part of the bank's Forex trading unit. It's going to become uh, one of the first global banks to enter the spot Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency trading. It's going to be a very exciting time, of course, because this is also what we've been discussing in the past, how everybody, individuals that are looking to try and get into the space, want to get into the space, but at the same time are very cautious over who they're going to be putting their money with. Is it reliable? Is it going to be a scam? Is it going to collapse? Is it going to be another another Mt. Gox? Is it going to be another FTX? This is why banks are always going to be a little bit more of an attractive um, option for investors, especially ones with larger amounts, sums of, sums of money as well, as it shows a bit more reliability in the fact that if they're offering the service, then of course, it's already gone through some sort of regulatory um, scrutiny to be able to be introduced to their clients in the first place. They see here through Standard Chartered. We've been working closely with our regulators to support demand from our institutional clients to trade Bitcoin and Ethereum in line with our strategy to support clients across the wider digital asset ecosystem from access and custody to tokenization and interoperability. So once again, always reaffirming what we've, dis what we've discussed in the past, the more institutions uh, that are getting involved, the more other institutions are going to want to get involved as well to be able to compete and to not lose out or to miss out. So very interesting, very interesting news here. Swiss National Bank and uh, the Swiss um, the Swiss Digital Exchange have both uh, started expanding uh, their explorations with regards to central bank digital currencies for another couple more years. The project Elvedia 3 involved an issuance of over seven digital bonds, totaling more than 700 million francs, which equates to about 843 million US dollars. So this exploration of tokenized securities as well as wholesale central bank digital currencies is just furthermore um, proof that every kind of institution, bank, central bank is looking into the central bank uh, digital currency space, how tokenization of real world assets is going to benefit us in the future. And the faster that these services are going to be um, looked into, explored, and of course tested, the faster it's going to be implemented into real world society as well. As far as it comes to the ETFs as well and the world cast, uh, the real world assets tokenizations that we've just discussed, it seems like the main leaders are BlackRock, Fidelity and JP Morgan respectively. These are the three big boys that seem to be uh, leading the blockchain tokenization adoption space. So Fidelity just now under a milestone um, Landmark has just joined the uh, JP Morgan's tokenized network as well. So this is going to be expanding their tokenization sector. Um, BlackRock's build uh, fund outspaces crypto native firms as well. There's a quote below here, um, speaking from BlackRock here, saying, since its launch in March, BlackRock's build has outpaced several crypto native firms, including Maple Finance's cash management fund, which focuses on short-term cash instruments. So furthermore, the larger the institutions that are getting involved, the more funds that are going to be into this space. And of course, this is also going to follow for other institutions to want to follow suit because they can see that the main ones that are getting involved now are majorly benefiting. So there's plenty of more slices of the pie that people want to take on to. Furthermore, um, lastly, Ripple. We discussed before how um, the SEC has dropped the case for Ethereum not being a security, whereas with Ripple, they've now advanced to further more trouble. The US court has advanced uh, Ripple securities case involving alleged misled uh, statements to the trial. Now, we've already discussed how Judge Torres out of New York has already um, discussed the aspects of XRP not being a security necessarily. And um, it's just found that Ripple's program, uh, programmatic uh, sales and other distributions of XRP were not investment contracts, which was exempting them from certain uh, securities regulations. However, this doesn't rule out uh, Ripple's institutional sales of $728 million in XRP, which were indeed unregistered uh, investment contracts, which is violated Section 5 of the Securities Act, apparently. So we will see what happens here when it comes to XRP. Um, there is 
of course, mention of the Howey test. We've mentioned before that the Howey test itself is a very antiquated system to be able to determine if something is a security, especially in the digital age now. Ripple's defense primarily argues that XRP doesn't meet the criteria of a security based on the Howey test, which is what we've said. Um, it says here, the defendants made no other argument in favor of summary judgment on the plaintiff's fourth case of action for misleading statements in connection with the other, with the offer or sale of a security. Summary judgment on that cause of action is denied and the claim will proceed to trial the court document mentioned so when it comes to the fundamentals of it it's not a positive for ripple when it comes to the price action of ripple it really hasn't touched the size it really hasn't done anything zooming out we can see that the price has been consistent from 46 to 40 48 49 cents and if you look back this has been the same price that we've hit several several times all dating back all the way to one or two years ago and further back as well so when it comes to XRP, we have same uh, support and resistance lines as before. It wouldn't surprise me if we were going to hit 46 cents, maybe even with potential to hitting around 44, maybe even 42, 41. However, it could just still go up to around the 51, um, 51 cent region as well. The news doesn't really... Um, doesn't really impact XRP. Whether the news has been majorly positive or majorly uh, negative, the price itself remains fairly consistent. So this is pretty much the news for this week, guys. Um, Ethereum, as we've mentioned before, has had a fairly positive week in terms of the fundamentals with the ETS, as we mentioned before, and of course, the SEC dropping the case now of it being a security. We can see here that we did have a bounce from the $3,333 region. We saw a spike up to around $3,600, and now we're at around $3,500. We'll see what happens with the price over the next week, which we'll surely discuss. Same thing goes for Bitcoin as well. Wouldn't surprise me to hit the top of this trend line once more. Could be around $64. $65,000 region and then come further down. Wouldn't surprise me to hit a solid touch of the $62,000 and then even come back down to around sixty-one to 60000 as well. But until next week, we shall see what happens. Thank you once again, everybody, for watching this video. If anybody has any follow-up questions, then of course, feel free to comment down below. I'll be happy to answer anything that you need. We're available 24-7 as well, so feel free to visit us at www.fpmarkets.com. And until next week, thanks very much for watching once more. Have a great weekend ahead, and I wish you all the best with your trading. Goodbye.